What are the four ways that we are wrecking our livers the most? Okay, a lot of us think that the liver is just involved in detoxing, but maybe when I put it in perspective, you'll listen up. Okay, the liver plays a big role in our metabolism, how we burn fat, how we actually get in shape, not just affecting us when we drink alcohol and things like that. Okay, so how can we avoid these four things? Well, I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but first let me address what these issues are. Number one, too much self-medication, okay? Simply put, we're taking too many over-the-counter painkillers because there's so many that are at our disposal. Okay, the number one that I wanna talk about is acetaminophen. When you consume acetaminophen, which is like what's in Tylenol, your liver has to work overtime on it. Okay, roughly 80 to 90% of that acetaminophen is metabolized into components that can be utilized by the body and processed without an issue. Then about 2% are metabolized in a way where the body just says, we can't use these, and you just excrete them out right then and there. Then the next set, that 5 to 10% that's left over, that is converted into something that's called N-acetyl-P-benzoquinamine, okay? And that N-acetyl-P-benzoquinamine is very, very toxic to the body. And what the liver has to do in order to process that is create something that's called glutathione. That glutathione binds with the N-acetyl-P-benzoquinamine and creates a water-soluble version of something that the body is able to process quite easily that's not toxic. So you see that glutathione sort of cancels it out. But we can only produce so much glutathione. And if we start taking in too much acetaminophen that's affecting the liver, then we start producing too much N-acetyl-P-benzoquinamine and that glutathione can't bind with it enough. So then we end up with toxic levels that can affect our liver and start causing some serious cell death within the liver. We definitely don't want that. Okay, then the next one we wanna talk about is going to be alcohol consumption. Okay, we know alcohol consumption is bad in excess, but how is it actually affecting your liver? Well, it comes down to acetaldehyde. Okay, when you consume alcohol, it's immediately converted into a small percentage of acetaldehyde. Then when it hits the liver, the way the liver metabolizes it is by converting it into acetaldehyde. That same effect of glutathione has to take place with the acetaldehyde. So when you consume alcohol too fast, or too much, then essentially your liver is unable to produce enough of the glutathione to counteract it. Therefore, you're having some serious cell death, some serious fibrosis, which is actually the adding of scar tissue to the liver. And if you've ever heard of cirrhosis of the liver, where the liver starts to actually die off, well, alcohol can directly cause that. But I'm not talking about the long haul here, I'm also talking about the short picture, okay? That short game where if you're drinking alcohol excessively and chronically, the liver's never getting a chance to start metabolizing the things that you want to metabolize to help you burn some fat. Okay, the number three one is one that's really, really obvious, but a lot of us don't know the mechanism of action within it, okay? And that is smoking. When we smoke, we're not directly impacting our liver, or indirectly impacting it, simply because the level of free radicals that it causes directly at the liver level. You see, once we smoke, it starts entering our bloodstream and eventually has to pass through the liver. When we have a high level of free radicals created in the liver's area, we end up getting serious amounts of fibrosis. Okay, and again, like that last segment, fibrosis is the formation of scar tissue, the formation of excess tissues that are really not bioavailable. So you're turning the liver from a usable organ that's filtering and working hard into something that's just a mass that's not really doing much, not that effective, but still has a blood flow. Kind of a waste of space, if you will. The next one and the last one is one that I found extremely interesting, okay, and that's sleep. I'm someone that doesn't sleep super, super well. I am a lot like you. I have a hard time sleeping because my mind's going all the time. But now I'm gonna make an extra effort to get that extra sleep because I did not realize how much of the liver's cells are regenerated during sleep. And the thing we have to think about is that the liver's job is to process things, which means that it's getting exposed to poisons a lot. Those liver cells are dying a lot and they have to be regenerated. They have to have what's called that apoptosis, which is kind of this promoted cell death that is supposed to happen within the liver. But when we're not sleeping, we're not regenerating those cells. We're not able to regenerate them at the rate that the liver needs them to be regenerated. So that's one of the most important things that you can do. I wanna talk about curcumin and turmeric. Talked about it before, talked about how important it is, but when it comes down to actually slowing down the cell death of the liver, that is where it really comes in handy. And it also promotes that apoptosis that I just talked about. So curcumin has been shown to help promote the actual cell death that needs to occur in order for the liver to produce new cells, in order for the liver to become refreshed so that it can do its job over again. Additionally, due to the powerful antioxidant properties of curcumin, it's been shown to reduce the molecules that can affect fibrosis, and liver damage.
Okay, I'm talking about bilirubin, I'm talking about transpepsidase, I'm talking about those kinds of things that impact the liver directly when it comes to being able to regenerate. Curcumin has been shown so many different times to have such a powerful antioxidant effect that takes the stress off of the liver. It doesn't mean that you go out and you do these things that you're not supposed to do, like drink excess amounts of alcohol, not get your sleep, smoke, you name it. But it does mean that you do have an extra barrier that can help you out a little bit. Additionally, when it comes to glutathione, that component that I talked about that actually couples with these toxic things to make them not so toxic, well, believe it or not, turmeric curcumin has been shown to increase our glutathione levels as well. So this video wasn't designed to just be a big push for turmeric. I just wanted to find something that was all encompassing that can help you through all these things that we're doing on a daily basis that are affecting our liver. As always, keep it locked in here on these videos. And if you're looking for a turmeric that's gonna be the most effective in terms of absorption, make sure you look at Pure Thrive, which is a company that I'm on the clinical advisory board for that allows a liposomal delivery so that you can get quite a bit more absorption of that turmeric to get a bigger impact. I will see you in the next video.